You're listening to the Dirty Air Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. Let me hear some scatter, brother. It's in the face, Donut. In the face. I don't really, to be honest with you, I don't know how to party. And now, here are your hosts, Chuck Bush, Jonathan Merriman, and Matthew Dillner. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Dirty Air Podcast. We are here again outside of the NASCAR Hall of Fame in the NASCAR Hall of Fame radio studios here at NASCAR.com. I said a lot of NASCAR there. I'm Chuck Bush, joined by Jonathan Merriman, Matthew Dillner, and special guest in the studio with us today, Spencer Gallagher. How you doing, man? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me out. How'd you like that reveal? That was that was insane. That was probably one of the coolest things I've ever done right yeah. there. It was like you're a magician. Yeah. It was like there was a green flag. There was a green and flag then, and then yeah. there wasn't. <laughs> wow. Now, if you could have had some like doves fly out, it yeah. would just be kind green of... Doves. Next time. What green does it doves. sound like when they cry? What? Doug? What? Yeah. What does it sound like <laughs> when doves cry? Well, it probably sounds like uh, Prince. Dove, dove my, what, yeah. my question about that has always been, they let them out. How do they get them back to do the next one? To like just have doves? They're trained. Farms? Doves come I, back. They must. Yeah. Those come back. They're like the boomerang of birds. Oh, oh, that's that. I would imagine that's important. I mean, <laughs> next on next week's reproduced. episode, Matthew Dillner will have dove facts. <laughs> the boomerang yeah. bird chat. We generally have uh, Merriman's eagle facts. My facts will have, will have peace. Have, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the Pope. Peace. And yes, the Preaching Pope peace. is in in America this week. He's not in Charlotte, unfortunately. No, he's in Washington D.C. You know what was going on this week though in Chicago, another large city in oh, yeah, uh, in maybe. America. It was a race. A big old race, dude. It was, I, I believe it was the first race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Playoff the, race number playoff one, race. baby. And you know what we talked about leading up to this race? The fact that we thought we might see some drama. Oh, and did we? <laughs> and we did. Drama, I, you say? Drama? In NASCAR? Never. Hey, Never. It, was, it was like Happy Gilmore. It was like, I'll see you in the parking lot. <laughs> you can count on me. To count on <laughs> it, it lived up. I think it lived up to the hype, and especially at the end, you saw Jimmy Johnson go over to try and uh, what Smooth looked like over. talk to Kevin Harvick, and then Kevin didn't want anything to do with it. Right? Was yeah. it a punch or was it a push? It was a push. It was a. It was a you know, it open. It's an aggressive push. We'll go with. All he I was, know is how could he's an MMA trained guy? How could he not get past his agent Josh? I got to say that. You got what? How, how does how does Come he? Come on, man. Well, his agent Josh him. is secretly a black belt, obviously. <laughs> well, see, he Josh, knows better. Josh is tough, I guess. Well, he, yeah. he was using his old uh, Western Carolina football skills there. Did you notice oh, he was going up and trying throw to throw that in there? I had to. Go. I had to. But, but that's you know, passion, it, baby. That was awesome. But if you go back to the on-track incident, yeah, who's at fault there? I I know I, I understand why Harvick's ticked. Okay, but the bottom line is, if you look at the in car, if you look at the footage, Harvick. When came down, he was trying to block that effort on that restart of Jimmy Johnson. He had a lot of real estate up high. And, but and isn't it Harvick's position? It's Harvick's position, but he crossed what the start finish it? line. It's racing, baby. So I don't blame either. I think it's a racing thing, uh, Merriman. Uh, Harvick didn't give him much space there, which, A, he's not supposed to. No, but when you do to. that, you have to expect sometimes you're going to get a fender. Well, and and – Jimmy gets a little bit of a shove from Joey Logano. That yeah. wasn't a little bit. It was enough. He about <laughs> he about turned him sideways. So they they were both in a pretty compromising position there. Unfortunately, Harvick came out the worst of it. If you're if you're in the front on that restart, are you going to move up the track and let Jimmy Johnson get there? You can't because then you're going three wide in the middle, and that's that's a no win. There was no situation in which Harvick came out a winner in that, nope. and unfortunately, he just got to be the biggest loser when it when that all that happened. And then on Jimmy's side, you got to go for it, and yeah. you got to hope that he have the real estate. If he if didn't, you're Jimmy. You can't lift because the nope. second you lift, the entire pack's coming right by you. So that's, and that's uh, what's so tough on those restarts right yeah. now. Well, and I think that just shows what's at stake right now. Because if this happens 10 races ago, do you see this altercation in the coach lot? Uh, maybe not because, uh, I, don't, I mean, you're going to be ticked off, but it's the playoffs, baby. So, uh, you know, it's a chase for NASCAR Sprint Cup. If, if you take me out and now I'm 16th, yeah, I'm going to be mad at you. I mean, should Jimmy have done what he did going to him in the coach lot? Yes. Maybe not that soon. <laughs> I don't know if I would have done it that soon. Uh, if I dump you, yeah. I'm going to probably wait. Like a, you might want to give that a little cool yeah, down period. Just a little period. bit of cool down just period. But, you know, bit. I respect for Jimmy Johnson because you know he didn't do it intentionally to wreck him. So right. he went there to gloss, uh, smooth things over. Maybe not the best timing, and Harvick uh, was a little mad. Maybe you wait Maybe you wait a day. Maybe you go on Monday. 
Yeah. Give him a call. On I Monday. think what yeah. he wanted to do was do it in person instead yeah. of the text message, instead Which, of the call that everybody seems like to do these days. Maybe a gift basket. That <laughs> yeah, might, if, if he brought some salami. Yeah. 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 Or you salami. Like, you got to bring an yeah. offering a piece first. Yeah. Salami's well, pretty good about like that. Like a, a, a fruit basket. Yeah. Well, they've talked before how Jimmy walked into Kevin's hauler at Homestead and kind of gave him a pep talk so he could, you know, get his wits about him and go win a title. So they've... They've had some adversity on the track before, the whole golden horseshoe comments and, and that kind of stuff. But <laughs> Who hasn't Harvick had well, I'm words saying, or, or, or skirmishes with? That's Kevin also, Harvick. They're yeah. also, you know, quote-unquote teammates sort in of, yeah. terms of, you know, Stuart Haas is running all Hendrick stuff. Uh, this is the chase, man. There ain't such a thing as teammates anymore. True yeah, it, I think it's all or nothing. And, you know, talking about that golden horseshoe, there was another guy who had a bit of a golden horseshoe uh, in the race on Sunday. Who was supposed to be beaten into the ground? Yeah. Like, if you go from oh. earlier in the week, Kevin Harvick says, yeah, we're going to beat Gibbs into the ground, and then Denny he, Hamlin. He's going to climb from 16th yeah. now to be, do some beating. Yeah. Do it, At though. the beginning of the race, it looked like maybe he was right mm -hmm. in that they were going to beat them into the ground. And then Denny Hamlin almost goes two laps down and then comes back to win? Resilience. Yeah. Well, he did it, it, it you know. Mile two or three of a four hundred mile race. Yeah, yeah. all time. things considered, he picked a pretty good time to do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. If he had done that later in the race, they would have pushed the panic. But Carl, button. Carl went a lap down halfway through the thing, and he finished second. Well, yep. you look at the how, what Gibbs did that day. I know we we're talking about Denny right now, and we need to talk about him. But the bottom line, look at Matt Kenseth. He was pretty much invisible, and then all of a sudden, yep. You look at the finish, and he was fifth. Yeah, I don't care what Happy says. Uh, these days, and I think going into the whole rest of this chase, you can't count Gibbs out. All the Gibbs cars as title contenders. I mean, every single one of them has shown some serious, serious strength, especially from where they were at the beginning of the year. I mean, talk about a turnaround. It's It's been pretty damn impressive to watch them uh, do all this. Well, you want to know something that's, that's, you know, dug into the ground or pounded into the ground and anchor, and they're anchored at the top of the pack, so... They are. They 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 pen some pen themselves with a sharpie into the next round of the chase. They're lawn darted right there. The lawn top. lawn darted. <laughs> I like that. We're just I gonna like continue that. down you, the you just stuck like, metaphors. I, I like it. it. I like it. Do you, do, is that an underhanded throw with the lawn dart? Oh no, it's overhand. Yeah, it's definitely overhand. The way, they, the way they took it to him on on Sunday, that was overhand mm -hmm. yeah. because they came back from adversity. You're talking about coming back from injury adversity. You're coming back from race adversity. They've come. They that was a a banner race for that team. Well, and you want to talk about adversity? Let's talk about diversity. You know, first Matt Kenseth puts on an absolute clinic at Richmond. Then Carl goes and wins at Darlington, and now Denny pulls this out of a hat and, at Chicago. And Kyle Busch has been the man. It's not like they're one trick ponies. I mean, these Gibbs cars are just insane at all kinds of tracks. Right and they now. they pick struggled. A track. They're doing well. They struggled at the mile and a halfs with the 2015 package earlier, but. They've you know, got to figure it figured out. They've, really. it's, yeah, yeah. they've turned it around. So the fact that they have that figured out, every other track that they're they're killing it at, look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Well, fun fun thing that happened in the media center after uh, after the race was over, Denny Hamlin. Fun Hammond's things happened in the media yes. center? Oof. Yeah. When? Oh, well, uh, well, you know, a little bit later on. <laughs> toward, uh, well, it was the last question, actually. Stan Creekmore asked a question, and Denny Hamlin answered, and... <laughs> He, you, you want to talk about some great, great things. He referenced one of the greatest athletes of all time, paying him a compliment. Mike Bossy? Huh? Who? Mike Bossy? Never heard of that guy. Okay, never. Been. I don't like hockey. I know he's Spencer, a hockey player. Spencer Gallagher. He's Best a race car driver. Of all time. How'd you know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, Camping World Truck Series driver and absolutely uh, incredible athlete. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, so, basketball player Michael Jordan texted Denny. So uh, let's take a listen to what Denny said in the media center. And uh, we'll talk about it here in a second. Well, I know one thing for sure. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to text Michael Jordan. He texted me on Wednesday. He said he was in Monte Carlo. And I popped in his head like I always do, which is, I thought was a little odd. Um, and he says, you know, I know that you're about to head into the playoffs. Uh, and I just want you to know I've never admitted to anybody that anyone is better at me than anything my whole life. But if you win this race this weekend, I will admit that you're a better driver than I am. And I thought, wow, that'd be awesome. And I just thought of that just now. So the first thing I'm going to do is text him and say, admit it, that I am better than you, and I want everyone to know. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he, he's better at driving. Driving. Let, let's just get this straight. He's talking about driving. This is MJ. It's Michael right. Jordan, dude. He It, it takes a everything. lot for him to admit that somebody is better than him at something. It, He's it, a very it, competitive person. If Definitely. you told Michael Jordan to make Afghans, 
he'd be better than any one of us. Oh, yeah. It's MJ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have watched him play basketball. It is like watching poetry in motion. It is one of the greatest things ever. Poetry in motion. Yeah. And all the 80s songs are coming back today. But you look at what Denny did coming back from that ACL injury. That was, and winning the race. That's pretty impressive. Coming from Michael Jordan, who had the flu and dropped, I don't know, what was it, like 50 points? I mean, <laughs> he is the GOAT. He is the GOAT, the greatest of all time in basketball. I don't want to get in that debate. That could be a whole other show, and we're not that type of sports network. But think about that. In, in, in all of sports, how does this rank as a comeback? Denny Hamlin? Yeah. It's under Kyle Busch. For sure. Under Cowboys? Yes. 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 But he's playing with the injury at the time. He's playing with the injury. Uh, yeah, uh, but, 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 you know, it's, it's it's an ACL injury. It's a tough injury to play with. I'm not going to discount it. He was discomfort. Had a lot of discomfort in victory lane. You could see him clutching his knee. Uh, but if he goes and wins the championship. That's something. You can, you know, you can push a gas pedal with a torn ACL when your leg's broken. Can't really do that. That is a little like, tough. Yeah. Flop there a little bit. That's yeah. like disgusting broken. to think about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what are what are some of the best uh, sports injury stories? That, like you've got Kyle Bush, Bo Jackson coming back. Bo Jackson. Oh yeah, that's a good run. one. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I personally Byron Leftwich back in two thousand and two, getting carried down the field to win the game on that uh, winning drive with uh, Marshall. That's up there. Personally, are you Marshall? I am not Marshall. No, I'm Western. You're Western. Hear me. Hear what, me. what about Hear you? Me you is there any sports uh, comebacks that stand out in your mind, uh, Spencer Gallagher? You know, I, I got to say, um, truthfully, I've been thinking about that recently. I think Kyle's is one of the better I've ever seen. I mean, really, you think about the, just the enormity of that kind of accomplishment. The guy sits out half the season, hasn't been in the car, gets not back a, in. Not a minor injury. Yeah, Whew. not not a little one. It's he was he was down and out for a good long while. Gets back in, goes four for five. Unheard of. Gives him an eleven of. an eleven race head start. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> You've got two drivers in that camp with leg injuries yeah. that are in good contention to win. And they're still the at the top of the game. I mean, Denny yeah. Hamlin missed a race earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Busch missed races. This camp is that strong. So if you're uh, what, Matt mean, Kenseth or uh, Carl Edwards, are you going around in the shop and looking for a hammer and trying to uh, oh, break your thigh or something? Carl Edwards needs to stop doing backflips because the way yeah, those guys are dropping say, yeah. down with leg injuries, <laughs> it's not Ooh, good. That, that'll be on national TV too. Oh, God, I could see the ankle just go all oh, Kevin Ware all over. But then Ooh. he'll do that, and then he'll go and win the championship. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I look at uh, racers with a – they've got a high level of toughness, whether it's Ricky Rudd taping his eyes open. Okay, I, I compare a racer, a true racer, to a hockey player. And when I think of I don't, comebacks, missing teeth? I think of comebacks. I think of things like like um, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Campbell, uh, Gregory Campbell of uh, the Bruins, who broke his leg, killing a penalty, stayed on the ice and finished the shift before uh, limping his way to the bench. Or, or, or Patrice Bergeron, another Bruin, who actually played an entire playoff series Play, played with a punctured lung and broken ribs. What about Ron Lott, who uh, broke his finger and then later had to have, he played the game, then yep. had to have it amputated. Yeah. That's football, it's not hockey. I mean, that that's a type of toughness. I mean, people have criticized De Denny Hamlin for sitting out that race earlier this year, okay, with the, the neck deal. People criticize his toughness. But then he shows up. He's got an ACL injury. He knows what this championship run means to his team. They've worked all year long for it, and he's – Ponying up, and he's powering through it, and that's that's tough. I will not disagree with that. What do you think, Jonathan? Still more impressed with Kyle Busch, but yeah, Denny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Denny. You have to do something a little more well, extreme. Because yeah. Denny's done it before. <laughs> yes. That's like it, that's why that's why it's not surprising. I don't think we've ever we would have ever thought that that we had a system to where you have to win and you're in and be in the top thirty in points and hurt your leg and literally. You know, was he broke a foot? Have and, you ever had as as Spencer? Have you ever had the power through an injury in any sport or or um or racing? You know, I've been I've been lucky enough that I've never had something like that happen to me. Knock on wood. Not yet. Yeah. Let's not, see. Not yet. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Can you make Give it, it through this show with a broken arm? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I don't know if you could, Dilner. Uh, no. No, because no, I couldn't uh, drink my sweet tea. Yeah, it'd be tough. You have to use a straw, and heaven forbid you do that. Nope, not with sweet tea, baby. Hey, yo. Anyway. All right. Well, 
It's, it's, <laughs> we, we get sidetracked easily in here, Spencer. I, I can tell that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dilder, Dilder, but Denny's well, the first guy locked in. I mean, that's the bottom right. line. We're yeah, talking about Denny Hamlin. Denny's locked in. But then you've got the opposite, man, with Kevin Harvick. Because here's the guy who's our champion of our sport. He's not done. He can go out there Didn't and win a done. race and, and do it fine. And I, yeah. was, I was also impressed with, with the Hendrick crew. Gordon leading laps. Johnson up front. We're talking about if they're going to flip the switch or not. Well, it looked like they hit, ready the, they hit the toggle. <laughs> now, you, can, uh, you can set your watch every year by the people that say Jimmy's off pace. They're not going to be <laughs> anywhere in the chase. This is going to be the year that they finally flub it. And sure enough, as soon as that he's first rate skids on, you can set your watch to it, man. He's right there. What do you think about Harvick, though? I mean, oh. 16th right now, he's, his back's against the wall. What do you think? Listen, listen close. This is reigning Sprint Cup champion Kevin Harvick, the guy that was so dominant all through last year, the team that was so dominant all through last year. They're going to find a way to get this done, get themselves locked into the next round, and I think they're still going to be there at the end. That's that's not a question. I agree chief. with Merriman. I mean, he, yeah, crew chief. I mean, he's got the, arguably the best crew chief in the sport right now, a guy who took a new team last year and took it to the championship. So – it could get done. His back was against the wall last year, and he won. I think I, I I'm, I've got no argument with that. I think he could do it. It's just it's it, we got to wait and see these next. It's two interesting, weeks. baby. Yeah. Yeah, this weekend, heading to New Hampshire, uh, Spencer Gallagher. You guys are going to be running in the truck series there. And again, you're on the show with us, and we like to have a little bit of fun. Really? So, yeah. Could you tell? New Hampshire. You going to New Hampshire? New Hampshire. You going up there? They give like a they, well, they give a lobster for. Do, they don't do that for the truck race. Do they, they give get you like, like a, a crawfish? crawfish? Yeah, we we get like a couple of shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some clam chowder. Some little chowder. A little chowder. A little chowder. <laughs> so I think that would work. Okay, Gappins, if you're listening to me, chowder for the winner. Probably not. Probably chowder. Not well, what are you guys going to be looking for up there in New Hampshire this weekend? Well, just uh, go out and get a solid finish. To be frank, you know, we uh, we had some pretty good speed with Joey Coulter there last year. Um, obviously, every year to go to a racetrack, it's a whole other ball game. But uh, going to be unloaded with two fast race trucks and go make good changes in practice and get her to the front. And uh, last time we were on a track that was sort of flat, St. Louis. Yeah, you had a good run there, a second place run. Definitely so, did. so you got to be looking forward to this race. Yeah, I mean our uh, our historical record at flat tracks, I feel, has been pretty good. Uh, got myself the second at St. Louis. My teammate Brandon Jones was running up front there as well till he had a problem with his oil cooler. Um, I think we got a really good package getting into Loudon. He's not going to have any fun up there, though. I'll tell you that. What, up no, in absolutely not. He's a very dull uh, race car driver. Very. This guy's sitting right here. Shouldn't be you're, sitting. you're dull? I'm kind of boring. You're kind of boring? Haven't noticed. That's not it what It takes I've a heard. lot to get me out of my shell. I have not noticed that, <laughs> if I'm honest. Just ask Matt. He'll tell you. <laughs> Matt, well, Matt, Matt stays in his shell all I'm the sitting, time. I'm, I just have a big fluffy shell. Um, <laughs> every time you look at turtle. this guy at the a racetrack, cocoon. when I'm, you know, he's in gym shorts or, you know, uh, he's get, climbing into the race car and he's laughing. You know, Spencer Gallagher always has to have a, a smile on his face and goof off with the camera and, you know. Some sweet look, I mean, he looks like a hero if you're watching on NASCAR.com or YouTube right now. But <laughs> that was perfect timing, <laughs> but, uh, by the way. It's <laughs> a sweet faux hawk, America. Faux-hawk, too. America. Bro hawk. You like that one? Yeah. It was very aerodynamic. We actually found in the wind tunnel that's worth a couple counts of side force. So that's why I was doing that. Well, that, that's a good look, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hey, well, you're a Vegas guy. You guys are going to be heading out there uh, soon. Yes, sir. Uh are you jumping off the stratosphere? Did I hear it right that somebody was jumping off the stratosphere? No, but that's a great idea. Just, speaking of dull Ooh, things. I need to do that. That'd Are you doing fun. anything fun out there? I you're... think we got a couple of uh, little events planned. We're going to uh, take me, and uh, I'm, I think we're trying to get a pink Cadillac arranged, and I'm going to give a tour oh, of yes. Las Vegas um, for some of the uh, Fox Sports guys. That'll be really fun. Yeah, I was talking with uh, Jeff Dubinsky, one of the guys who uh, works over in, in the tower, and then he's flying out there, I think, going to. Shoot some stuff for the setup, possibly. Hopefully, yeah. pre-race show. So. Uh, I'll show them a good time. What's the funniest thing that's happened with you and your team this year? Because we're all on the road together, and when we're on the road together, we have just a little bit of fun. No, we don't. Like like painting my van the last time we were in. Uh, <laughs> they painted my van last time we were in New Hampshire. Oh man! What sort of hijinks have you been a part of here in this uh, in this uh, first full season here for you? Uh, in, in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. There's got to be some fun moments. Well, it's something that <laughs> we've established a little tradition whenever we're having kind of a dull moment in practice. Um, usually it's it's me that'll start it, but we'll all get on the radio and, and start singing something. Sometimes it's Journey, just just the power ballads. You know, whenever we got to fill some time, we'll... we'll <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll have a little impromptu a cappella session. It's fun. This is the second driver in two weeks that has talked about singing on the radio. Casey Mears, Casey Mears did. said that uh, Booty does that on the radio. He'll ask yeah. him, like, do you want to change something with the, with the tire? He's like, yeah, change the tire, yeah. Like, he'll <laughs> sing something to him. So, I mean, is, is that a thing? Are drivers now singing on the radio? I just like to do it when I, <laughs> if I'm bored and I want to liven up the day for the guys, start singing Come Sail Away with me. It's really great. I can hit those high notes just can, so can, fantastically. Can you, can, can you can you tell us to come sal- sail away on well, dirty? You gotta come be sail away with me. Yeah, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't think that, that, I don't think that infringes experience. any copyright things because that those were not the notes in the song. That's fair that use. Exactly. Yeah, that, <laughs> see, that's how I get <laughs> around it. He just said some words that were in his own absolutely uh, yeah. vocal range. I guess would be amazing. the best way. I can't get that. I, I can't get that high. Yeah, uh, I got to try. Sometimes you got to cinch down the crotch belts a little extra yeah. tight to hit those notes, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. You know, well, those, it, those crotch belts will get you. Yeah, I, I, try I, hitting I, them all. <laughs> Oh, I think the point is not to it's, do that. Oh, no, it? no. Yeah. I've had it happen. And yeah, I, I, that's the only time in life I could have hit a high note. It's probably why you're doing a podcast and not driving a race car. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, you, you got a lot taken. of, you got a lot of loft in your driving there, Dillner. Yeah, uh, ballast. No, lo- lack of flipping talent. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, can you feel the love tonight? Oh, you oh. burnt, you burnt, you burnt. You smell that? Yeah, that's, that's Dillner, uh. <laughs> Division. Talking about the NASCAR Blunderbuss Division. Long Island Trackside. Long Island it. Trackside. <laughs> that was back in like 1993. Oh, my goodness. What year were you born? Uh, 89. 89, so 25. I was yes, working sir. in TV when he was like three. I was in kindergarten when he was <laughs> yeah, you know, born. Yeah. These days, <laughs> Doesn't these, sound as good as this. Young kids I was working days. in TV. I was in kindergarten. I was one. <laughs> You were one. I was in kindergarten. Look, I, I got to ask you a random question. We love having like rounds of randomness here with our drivers. Um, I saw somewhere, like last year or something, I think it was, that you worked in Silicon Valley mm-hmm. with like a, a an upstart company or something. Yeah, little did startup. You, is it close to the show, Silicon Valley? Did you Valley? have is doors like that? that went like this, or did they go like this? Well, see, I was actually, um, <laughs> I wasn't a member of the Trace Comas Club back then, uh, so yes, I didn't yes. have doors. I just had two wheels and a little chain that <laughs> so went you around, around. You, had, do- you yeah. had pedals that went like this. Yeah, I had pedals that went like this. It was, it was pretty effective. <laughs> Um, I will tell you this, though, in my experience and in a lot of the experience of my friends that I still have back there, that show doesn't go far enough. I, like, oh, really? It's that, but worse. That so it is one go of my favorite enough? shows on TV yeah. right now. Oh, no, absolutely. Right, right here. Yeah. Same right thing. If you don't know, we're talking it's about right in the middle. Silicon it Valley, it, the show it, on HBO. It's right in the middle. Yeah, it doesn't right go in out. the middle. It's great. It's fun. <laughs> You know what? There's a, a a truck race in New Hampshire this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's the. 500th. I think there might be a race at some point yeah, here. It's Who the knows? 500th truck race in the NASCAR wow. Camping World Truck Series. It's a milestone. It's a milestone Super weekend. 600th uh, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour race up there, but 500 truck races. Yeah, I can't believe it's been that, it's long. Been that long. Yeah, you're that old, man. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh wow. I'm you sorry, I that? broke him. You smell that? You burnt. You burnt. You burnt. <laughs> I got burnt by you, by you. Merriman, you're next. Yeah. No I pressure, Merriman, you. but you you got him? Get the marshmallows out, yeah. man. Talking about hitting the wall? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I've been burnt by three That's, people. Yeah. There you go. I guess I'm not memorable. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah, you are not memorable you're not. at all. Anyway, so New Hampshire, we're going up there. It's going to be a fun weekend. You're not going up. Nope. Why not? Joy kill. You stink. Uh yeah, I'm doing I'm doing six of laundry. these last nine. Yeah, probably I'm doing laundry. I'm just coming off the road from doing four straight. <laughs> oh, I'm getting Ooh, wow. Ooh, whoa, <laughs> hang on. Pump I mean, the brakes there, guy. That side of the table, Pump I the think he got the beat two of them with the uh, on the road thing. Just uh, saying. Yeah, I'm I'm you know it's still try doing on thirty the road. something races a year, buddy. You, you Come don't on, brags about it. Why are you complaining? I'm not complaining. <laughs> I love it, baby. I love being at the racetrack. There's nothing better. Yeah, being at the racetrack, except better. for like being here at the Dirty Air podcast, drinking sweet tea. And well, at New Hampshire, fun. though, we've got a big weekend. We've got the Modifieds yep. on track. We've got the Truck Series, which is a good. Last year, that was a great race. Hey, every the E Series always up there. ACT late models. I mean, it's like a it's like a uh, you know colorful like. It's a real coming together event. I've always yeah. liked it for that. As a race fan, you can't help but love that. I mean, you got the big show on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, this is a playoffs, dude. It's playoffs. This is a playoffs. It's the playoffs. It's a playoffs. But then the whole weekend, it's not a typical race weekend where we just have some practice and qualifying and then maybe a, a Xfinity Series race and then or a truck race and then boom into the cup race the next day. This weekend is just jam-packed, and that's what's so cool about going up there, and it's a region 
that is a great market for NASCAR. And the fans that are up there are so, so passionate, whether it be about the short track series that NASCAR brings there or the Cup Series. That place is always packed. And it's fall in New England. Oh, I love that weather. The weather is going to be awesome. I'm going to drink some uh, pumpkin beer shipyard and uh gonna eat some seafood and mm. lots of seafood mm-hmm. I'm the, about racing. the racing i think is gonna be pretty good personally it's new hampshire but you've got two teams that have done really well there in the past one mm-hmm. of them pinsky gibbs you know that's kyle bush got one of his wins in that little streak there earlier in the year and then last year pinsky swept what are we going to see out of these teams at this track in this second race of the playoffs, I think a sleeper pick is going to be uh, be Clint Boyer, his crew chief. Wow, can set up a race car for that place. Wow, he got, I, I like true. that boldness. He there. got that's true. He got Vickers a win yep. there. You yeah, know? so that's I'd say is that a bold pick? I don't know that if that's a bold pick. That's that's a bold pick. The way that they've been they've running, been, they've yeah. been running yeah. okay. in, in the here. face of everything they're up against right now, that's that's a bold pick. I respect it is. that. True, yeah, definitely. I'll but give that, that would be a sleeper. For hey, me. let me tell you something. If you if that pick wins, we're going to play the lottery, man. I'm sorry, Clint Boyer, but right now you guys are a top ten team, not a winning team at this point. I don't think so. If you they're... predict that, that's a. I mean, if that happens, that will be one of the stories of the chase. Absolutely, without question. Who do you think is going to win? If you had to pick somebody, if I gotta put somebody, if I gotta put my money on somebody, it's the uh, the boys and boys in yellow there, the Penske crowd. They're just so strong at that place year in year out. And you know what? I think um, they feel that this is their first real big opportunity yeah. to to notch one off. And both uh, hashtag Jolo and Brad Kozlowski, they're <laughs> uh, they're strong contenders there every single time they show up. So I gotta put it on them. It's which it's, one? It's a flat track though. I can't, on, you I can't pick. pick. Oh. I can't. Uh, you gotta pick. Come on. Fine, I think Brad wrecks Joey. Oh, <laughs> you love playing with my car. I do. Drama. This thing's fun, man. Fun. Go back and forth. Vroom, vroom. It's because I'm three inside. Well, I, you know, we are going to see the modified. So but, I've got to yeah. see. Here. Talk to me about this because Penske's really good at the road courses, and there's no banking in the corners of the road course. And like we said, New Hampshire's fairly flat. Is there a, a correlation with how those cars drive on flat surfaces? It makes them good there, or not particularly. Um, it it's a stretch. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's still you know the funny thing is New Hampshire the way it drives it's a flat mile but it still drives fast enough that you actually get a pretty significant aerodynamic effect at a place like that. Whereas, Especially at the end of that back stretch. Yeah. Oof. Whereas um you know road course the the effects are really rather minimal and you build the cars pretty different too. But uh, you know it's it's the similar principles apply. Um, obviously, Penske is very good at making some low light and left short track cars, and that stuff really counts at those flat tracks. And it's the same kind of principle at a road course. I mean, the the more flyweight you can get them, the faster they'll go. I honestly think it's going to be. I want going into this deal. I thought it was going to be Joey Logano, but I can't ignore the Gibbs cars. Mm-hmm. And when I look at the Gibbs cars, and I look at what Matt Kenseth did last week, being virtually invisible the whole race, and then showing up and getting a fifth place finish. If he's anywhere. In that top ten, at the end of that New Hampshire race, he's going to get the W. I think he's. I I think I said Clint Boyer's my dark horse, but Matt. Oh, Kenzer, I thought he was your pick. No, no, no. So we get no, two no, picks no, now. No, no I'm just two. saying. Like, I mean, this is, I know oh. it's America, but geez, he's that's, yeah, that's, that's like greedy. Greedy. freedom and opportunity. Yeah, there you go. Freedom, capitalism. What about? Uh, <laughs> so who's your win then? Who's your pick for the no, win? No, Kenseth would be my pick for the win. Oh, did you just copy me? No, I didn't copy. He might have he's my pick. I Next thing you know, he's going to wear a hat. Next he's thing you know, he's going to wear a hat He's like my this. pick to win the championship. Cool Look, glasses. start drinking sweet tea. I picked him at Richmond. I said he's <laughs> one of the best short track drivers out there. Very true. And New Hampshire's a big short track. Did you just call him Sweetie? I said he started drinking sweet tea. Oh, I thought you called him Sweetie. I was like, hey, oh, sweetie. that's so nice. <laughs> no. I don't uh. want to copy you in anything. I'll drink my sweet tea with a straw like a, like, like a normal human being. Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten heresy here having, on the Dirty Air I, I Podcast. Know, I knew having him on the show would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to take. Who are you going to take, I'm going to take Kevin Harvick. Ooh, risky wow. choice there. It's a risky choice, but I think. I think he has a better shot at Dover, personally. I but think he'll finish second like he has done all year. <laughs> I just, I, I think. He hasn't won a race since the spring. This is true. You know, and, and it's not like they're not, they don't have the speed every weekend. But he hasn't capitalized. He can hasn't even, closed the deal. Can you even call that the spring? Well, they call him the closer. I mean, okay, was, he, he proved like, it last. It was, it was like the spring. It was late winter. Well, let's see if he closes this weekend. Spring. 
That way, it was late yeah, winter, early By definition, spring. that is yeah. sort of a spring. NASCAR yeah. goes west. It was kind of in the spring. Just <laughs> it was March. It was March, April. You it know? was warm out there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was yeah. Nice. That's a good thing about the, spring. That area. Mm-hmm. It's better weather in that time of year. Drought. <laughs> Man, there's no yeah, water. See, that helps. Yeah. Well, we have kind of derailed a little bit, but no. one thing we yeah, no never on this show we never derail, but we always get back on point, and we always go to Jonathan Merriman. Because you, you got your little uh, eagle. Yeah, you got to pull that eagle down. I do. Here. I'm Eagles. trying to do this. I'm doing this like do you I got like to talk eagles, into Spencer my Gallagher? microphone. I'm Move American, aren't I? Boom. Who doesn't like eagles? Russia. See? I went a little loud on that. But Jonathan Merriman, give us your pull eagle, eagle down here. fact of the week. All right. I'm, uh, I'm relating this back to... Uh, be, what are you... Why go you back on your here? side. Yeah. Go oh, back God. to your side. Yeah. He's just trying to help. Go back to your home. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to told to go to your room. <laughs> wow. All right. Get on your That's fence. a bad dinner. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I've been ready. Bald Eagles, they're opportunistic, much like uh, Kevin Harvick and the Chasers are going to have to be, right? Um, so you're going to want to set your sights on a win, possibly make the win your prey, or who knows, maybe... Maybe you want some retaliation and make them your prey. I don't know. But eagles have a wide uh, range, of, range of prey. Birds, mammals, fish, all that stuff. Uh, so they eat just about anything. They also scavenge. So, yeah. They're very Scavage, affectionate, too. He's scavenging you right quit, now. Quit pecking me in the face. Uh, <laughs> Get your pecker out of his face. Go. <laughs> Come on. What else you got on that? Anything else? Or is that it? Is uh, that the end of your eagle fact? In the wintertime, their diets move to greater a greater portion of wild, waterfowl and gold. He doesn't even know what winter is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This was... eagle fact has been a complete disaster. <laughs> this eagle fact was brought to you by... The Pope. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Pope loves eagles. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because he's Pope, here in America. He's he, well actually, he likes Fiat. Loving. It's Fiat. Imagine Fiat. if it was a Fiat with well, an eagle on it. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be eagles in New Hampshire. There might be. I don't know, but you can find out with us. Be sure to log on to NASCAR.com to check out this podcast. We'll have probably a blog up that Jonathan might write. There will be Gallagher's. There will be Gallagher's. Uh, You ever smash any fruit? No, no. Okay. I, I actually not kind of need to do that though yeah. at some point in my life just to say I have. We could do an F. I was going to bring a uh, watermelon, but uh, yeah. I anyway, to. go on to iTunes, search the Dirty Air podcast, subscribe to this podcast, go on YouTube, watch it, comment, let us know what you think. Because we'll read them, or Dilner will, and then he'll tell us about it, because that's what he does. <laughs> a Twitter baby. He's you know Twitter just, baby. You know Follow us on Twitter. Everybody's Follow got Spencer their Twitter account. Gallagher, 23 Speed Racer. Follow that guy. For everybody here, Jonathan Merriman, Matthew Dilner, Spencer Gallagher, I'm Chuck Bush reminding you to hop out in that clean out, chase down leader, and we'll see you next week back in the pack here in the dirty air. See you in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 <laughs>